Hey, Young Turks, this is Nomi Konst. Uh, we are here today to discuss the heralded by the national press uh, tuition plan that came out of New York, which Governor Cuomo signed yesterday alongside uh, Hillary Clinton, Secretary Hillary Clinton. It is called the Excelsior Excel 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 Scholarship, and it is uh, being heralded as a model for free tuition. Except the devil's in the details. As you guys know very well, we've been covering this rogue group of Democrats in New York who have separated themselves from the Democratic conference, uh, ultimately preventing a majority uh, in the Democratic uh, Senate, in the Senate among Democrats. And some are saying uh, that if the Democrats had controlled the Senate, there would have been a free tuition bill very early on and it would have been more detailed and had um, had benefited more New Yorkers and typical students. Uh, we're lucky to have Senator Toby Ann Stavisky, who is from Queens. She represents uh, District 16, correct? And correct. she gave, uh, the other night, you guys were, were debating the budget into the late hours and when you had a vote on the budget, once it was finally presented, you gave a, a very detailed explanation of what was left out. And that really stood out to me um, watching uh, the senators on the floor that night, your, your statement. So thank you for joining us today. Thank you for inviting me. So let's just get to it. What, what is actually in this bill? What, what does a scholarship actually do? Well, I was there yesterday at uh, LaGuardia Community College uh, to watch the governor and uh, Hillary Clinton uh, um, and that passed the sign the uh, bill that we passed uh, late uh, Sunday evening. And what it does is essentially provide a middle class tax cut, a tax cut for the people earning this year under a hundred thousand uh, dollars, a hundred and ten thousand next year, and a hundred and twenty five thousand uh, dollars based upon adjusted gross income for the future. Because the people who um, our lowest income, they will have TAP and that will cover the cost of their tuition. It's the middle class that always seems to suffer. And this is technically a middle class bill that would provide tuition at CUNY and SUNY, both the two year and four year colleges, free. First area I would like to um, discuss is the Excelsior program for the middle class. Um, tuition cut. Can you tell us how many people would be eligible? Through you, Mr. Through you, Mr. President, uh, actually about 25,000 people in the first year. The governor at the Finance Committee budget hearing testified that there would be 940,000 people from SUNY alone, plus the number of students from CUNY. So <clears throat> even though it's phased in, that number seems to be very low. However, there are certain caveats in the bill, and one of which, uh, perhaps the most controversial part, is to require students to live and work in New York for four years if they have a bachelor's degree and two years for an associate degree. And that's prior to uh, qualifying for this No, that's after graduation. Oh, after graduation. That's after, gra okay. after graduation. Uh, the go governor's bill, as negotiated by the legislature, the Excelsior program, mirrors legislation that I introduced in 2015, sponsored in the assembly uh, by Assemblyman uh, Skoufis uh, from the Orange County, Rockland County area of New York State. Uh, and it very close to what we have here. However, we did not require the residency ingredient, because what happens, I'm sorry, the work, uh, uh, working in New York, because what happens if they can't find a job? Right. There are many people who graduate, who look for a job, can't find a job. So our legislation uh, takes out that working requirement. And how is that even enforceable? Uh, if you have the scholarship and it's, it's, it's paid for, I mean, if you can't find a job in your second year, or the economy crashes or some sort of, you know, tragedy occurs or something, uh, do they go back and, and try to get back? There's a mechanism for appealing uh, certain requirements. It's going to be administered by the Higher Education Services Corporation that administers TAP, the Tuition Assistance Program, which is a really terrific program 
goes back a long time and it's been very successful. But there are a lot of things that were lacking in the bill. And I don't mean to infer that the bill was not a good one. It was. However, as um, uh, I think it was Voltaire who said, the perfect is the enemy of the good. <laughs> and we can't ignore the good parts of the bill. We also can't forget what's lacking. To me, the DREAM Act was extremely important. What this revenue bill in terms of higher education lacks is the DREAM Act uh, for undocumented students. Approximately $40 billion is the figure that's been cited on what the undocumented individuals contribute to the economy. Because obviously when a student graduates from college with a degree, they're going to have more income, they'll pay more in taxes, they tend to buy locally and participate in the community. There are a lot of benefits for the DREAM Act, and unfortunately it is not in this revenue bill. Uh, the DREAM Act provides uh, tax availability for undocumented students, and uh, unfortunately uh, the Senate Democratic Conference put that into our budget proposal, but in the, and the Assembly supported it and voted for it and passed it um, with a large margin. However, and the governor supported the DREAM Act, but unfortunately the eight rogue Democrats plus the Republicans got together and took it out of the negotiated budget. So that I think is one of the major drawbacks of, uh, of the negotiated budget. There's some other uh, things. I've always said that we ought to increase tuition uh, for out-of-state students. Mm -hmm. uh, they charge us when our students go out of state, and I think we should uh, certainly raise the tuition rates for the out-of-state students. Um, one of the other problems is that uh, there's a question of how many people are eligible. Right. On the floor of the Senate, uh, I asked that question, and I was told 32,000 uh, students they expect to be eligible, and that's going to they have uh, allocated 163 million for those 32,000 students. However, the governor's office said there are 940,000 hmm. uh, students yeah. eligible. That's a big discrepancy. And. Uh, and Very some of the reporting, you know, the New York Times did a, a pretty uh, intense analysis yesterday and uh, other New York area papers have yes. criticized this for um, the numbers being skewed. Uh, also, you know, they're full-time students. I mean, there's a, you have to be a full-time student. And I immediately went as, as a woman, uh, I immediately thought of the single mother who cannot afford to drop everything and become a full-time student and is not going to have the benefits of this program. Uh, so is, why do you think that these things were left out of the bill, especially you know, given uh, the power that Governor Cuomo has in this state? You have to think of who represents the, the single-parent families, mm -hmm. the Democrats and the rogue Democrats. Mm -hmm. the, Requirement of the 30 credits, I think, is better than saying 15 per semester because it does give flexibility if you want to do 12 credits and then six at the winter uh, break and 12 during and 12 during the summer, uh, six during the summer. I think that somewhat solves the problem, and that was in our original um, proposal that it be 30 credits per year. Uh, to give flex students flexibility, but uh, we care about the single parent uh, uh, families, the mothers struggling uh, to provide, put food on the table and go to school at the same time. It's very difficult. Um, I remember working full time uh, and going to graduate school and taking six credits and it was difficult mm -hmm. uh, for me. And then I took nine credits because I figured they'll never find out. And I wanted to finish. And they never found out. Well, that's, that's tricky. Don't give anybody any ideas. Uh, say, say the Democrats take back the Senate in 2018. Is there an opportunity to expand this and, and make it what you 
dreamed of because of course the democrats control the assembly and and most likely there will be a democratic governor as well uh given the dynamics of the state do you, do you see something being expanded here absolutely absolutely at the end of the budget debate sunday night our conference leader uh senator andrea stewart cousins the only woman incidentally to lead a conference uh in albany ever uh she made the distinction between progress and progressive. And I think this is a perfect example. This is a big step. It's progress, but it's not as progressive as it would have been if the Democrats had written it. We had a budget resolution, uh, which the Republicans refused to let us introduce uh, on the floor, but we had to do it in letter form. And that was part of our Democratic progressive agenda. What do you mean in letter form for, for our audience? Well, we had to do it in letter form because they challenged our right to introduce. They ruled it was not germane, hmm. as they do every each and every time we do it. So this is ultimately what happens. I mean, when, when we talk about these these eight rogue Democrats who have run, let's be very clear here, they are from Democratic districts. They've run on Democratic principles like the DREAM Act. Uh, and they have work, they are essentially caucusing with Republicans because they're leading committees and you know introducing their own stuff as well. Um, so this is this, these dynamics. This is the effect of having eight Democrats leave your conference is that you know you can't introduce legislation on the floor. We can introduce legislation. Can, it just won't pass. It won't pass, right? Uh, we have problems getting bills reported out of committee. Uh, we have done hostile amendments on the floor and they've been rejected by a party vote by the Republicans hmm. plus the eight rogue Democrats. So as a result, they are enabling the Republicans to continue their majority. And I think that is uh, not a good prospect. I hope that they will realize the error of their ways and come back uh, uh, to the Democratic conference, because I'm sure we will be happy to uh, to put the put politics aside and think of the progressive agenda that I think that many people feel is the direction New York State ought to go. Senator, do you think that uh, the public in post in this post Trump era understands what's happening? Is 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 paying more attention to what's happening in Albany? I hope so. I hope so. We've had unity rallies all over the state. Uh, we've had a number of them in Queens County, and I know that they've had them upstate as well. Uh, they are unwittingly, perhaps, to be kind, enabling the Trump re slash Republicans to continue in power. And that's, that's <laughs> not good for their constituents. When someone represents an immigrant district or somebody represents a middle class district, uh, there are issues that are very important, the jobs, the economy. Uh, the reason the DREAM Act is so important, as far as I'm concerned, is that the students will benefit, but so will society. People with a college degree will earn more money. They'll pay more in taxes. They will buy in the local stores. They'll participate in community activities. Uh, many of them came here as children. Uh, they don't commit crimes. They're students who happen to lack the documentation that other people who were born here have. And they should be given the opportunity, uh, as the president, uh, President Obama uh, did, to stay in New York, to participate, and the state will benefit. Is there anything at this point that Donald Trump's White House and a Republican Congress and Senate could do that would um, affect this legislation? Yes, without question. The first thing that comes to mind is that they should not cut the Pell Grants. The White House has talked about cutting $17 billion from the, or million dollars from the Pell Grants. And I asked that question on the floor, what's going to happen if the Trump administration cuts Pell Grants to, to students because that's the first scholarship money they have to use. TAP doesn't kick in until they've exhausted their Pell Grant. Uh, so I think that's critical. Secondly, uh, 
I am appalled at the secretary, Betsy DeVos. I just can't believe how outrageous her appointment was and the things that she has said. So I think there are things that uh, can be done and we just can't continue to enable people to participate in the Trump agenda. It's wrong. It's wrong for New York, but it's also wrong for the country. Senator, thank you very much for, for taking the time. Um, we're, we're hoping that the Democrats take back. We're, we're, we're the Young Turks, so we're very progressive. We're openly progressive. Uh, but we're hoping that the Democrats take back the Senate and that you're able to, to bring forward a more progressive um, piece of legislation, the most in the country, hopefully, the most progressive hopefully, piece of legislation. I, we've always been, you know, the Excelsior State, which means forever onward or upward. And I think we're working on it. Thank you very much. Thank you.